Welcome everyone. It is March 23rd, 2022, and this is Expanding Your Consciousness. And our theme tonight is sacred art and other forms of art as well. So tonight we'll be showing a variety of things, paintings and pictures, some video as well. And so we'll just begin. And I, I just wanted to open it up to the group. Did someone want to begin? And I can uh, share screen. Oh, why don't why don't we uh, start with Ken? Ken, you want to do that? Sure. Kicked off, the, okay. kicked off the whole idea. I was a member of something called the Academy of European Arts and Culture, and the teacher used to use art as his way of teaching spirituality. And what he would do is interpret sacred art. Hmm. And he could tell the difference between regular art and sacred art. And I don't know how he could do that, um, but I did manage to learn something from him. So he was a member of a European mystic school. Now there was a European mystic school in Florence in the Renaissance, and the painter of this, of the birth of Venus, is uh, Alessandro Botticelli. Well, let me explain what this depicts. So. In the Renaissance, a number of fabulous things happened to art. And one of them was that they started uh, in Christian art. In those days, religion was a very serious thing. And it's hard for us to grasp that. They really, truly believe. And we kind of mock that now in our modern society. But if you're going to understand this painting, try to let go of this modern view that it's all hocus pocus and stories and try to imagine what it's like to really believe that by being baptized, you, you were now in the family of the church and that protected you from things. It was so, imagine that all those stories are really true. And if you can do that, it'll help on this picture. So this picture, the birth of Venus, well, you know, let's do the first thing we're gonna do, try to get up close and have a look at her face. Now, if you can, Put your face and give it the same look that she has. Just try that. See what happens. See what happens to your consciousness. Can you double click that and make it larger by chance? Ooh, there boy, there we go. Works. Now we can get to her face. There she is. So if you can do it, you will find your consciousness slipping into a higher state. So she is a goddess in the legend. And one of the things that was allowed in Christianity because of the Renaissance was that they could paint pagan myths into Christian uh, stories and, and, uh, and combine them in art. So of course, Venus is, is the goddess of love in paganism. So the first thing to pay attention to is that face. And that told my teacher, Mervyn Brady, that this artist knew how to achieve higher states. And not only that, he knew how to teach it and that's what he was doing with this painting. I used to have this painting on my wall and I had another one that you can buy these things pretty much any museum or any museum of art. I had another one just with the face so I could try to imitate that face. And if you do it eyes open, sometimes I have to go eyes closed, but that, but that's, it's just, I, I, I get it emotional just looking at the thing. Okay, can we zoom back now to full length? In um, Renaissance times, they believed that the soul looked out the left eye and the creature or the body looked, or the instinctive center, whatever you wanna call it, looked out the right eye. So in Renaissance art, not this particular picture, but I'm going to show you one here. Probably recognize this, this mm. little lady. Mm. <laughs> if you uh, get your measurement. So should I stop? Us. Should I? How do I do No, that? I'll just hold it here for a second. I just want to illustrate one minor point. Oh, and it's, okay. they had all kinds of rules uh, or codes so that you could understand. If you were a member of one of these secret schools, you mm -hmm. knew what to look for. And one of them was the position of the left eye. So in, in the Mona Lisa, so Da Vinci was also a member of the same school and he was a contemporary of Botticelli. 
So that you, you can't tell from just holding up the picture, but in fact, the, the left eye is right in the center of the picture. Now they also learned a little bit about the golden mean or the golden ratio. And so you'll notice that in this one, the, the eyes are 62% is below and 38% is above. That's the, more or less the golden ratio. So they did all kinds of these things to, to for, so for people who knew all these silly rules, you could tell what the art, what the author was trying, or the painter was trying to do. So let's look at this beautiful painting. The reason I mentioned all that about the left and the and the right, and the the soul and the body. So this depicts the two kinds of love: love of God, symbolized by the heart, or the higher form of love, and uh, sexual love, symbolized by the right hand. So now let's look at the using that right left thing again we'll look at the left side of the painting which corresponds to her left hand which corresponds to her right eye which is where the soul looks <laughs> okay so look at that side of the painting and you'll see wind and water angels and flowers but yeah because this is in the uffizi in the museum in florence and it i sat in front of this thing for like I forget how long, half an hour or something. Yeah. And, and and just looked at it and tried to piece all this together. Yeah. And I'm just thinking now. It looks right to me. I mean, I've seen this before and it looks I don't I don't think it's reversed I from think what you're I right. saw. Yeah, I think it is right. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna carry on with the so you see her in fact I know it's right now. Yeah, you are right. Because you see her left eye is the one that's looking mostly at us and the right eye is in the shade. Yeah. That's right. But I still want you to make the same observations. On yeah, no, side. definitely. <laughs> this is fascinating because I'm reflecting on an experience I had in regards to the left and the right eye. Yeah, it's um, amazing, isn't it? There's, if, you, if you're uh, very emotional one day and the tears come out of one eye, pay attention to which eye it is, and you'll find that's kind of interesting too. So uh -huh. anyway, we'll go on the right side, but it has... Um, two angels blowing, blowing her ashore, and it's all light and um, water and waves, and they're, and, they're, and they're naked angels embracing and all this stuff. So it's that kind of energy. On the other side is land and trees, and it's solid earth. So she's come from some kind of a holy place where angels and flowers and everything are, and she's being blown onto good old Mother Earth. Um, and you see this figure on Earth is coming to hide her nakedness. So in, no, in those days, they were really conservative. Nakedness was not, in pre-Renaissance times, it wasn't, a, I mean, this, this society believed that it was a very big thing to be celibate your whole life. They, they thought that was important. So on this side is this, a sort of serious looking woman coming to cover her up. Now, what are they really covering up? Well, the goddess of love. So that look induces a higher state of consciousness. And my teacher Mervyn thought that higher state of consciousness is what Botticelli was painting when he painted this figure, mm -hmm. that that's what she represents. It's the two levels of consciousness, really. Mm -hmm. It's one, the con so they had a concept of that, um, they would go, remember Jesus went like that? And have you ever seen uh, the Orthodox Christians uh, cross themselves? The Western Catholics cross themselves with their hands like this, and they go up and down. Well, in the East, in the Orthodox ones, they go like this. Okay, so I've got two fingers up. And okay. the fingers, and there's two fingers down attached to the thumb. So two of those fingers refer to the soul so here it is here, it's like that. And okay. in fact, there's a painting of uh, quite a common one of this called the Sacred Heart. Lots of, right, lots of artists did it. And Jesus is going like this, and he's got his other hand with same po pointing to his heart. And so the, the message there is, if you want to get to heaven, you do it through the heart. And 
Mervyn emphasized that the, the paintings don't show this, <laughs> they don't show that, they show the two fingers on the heart. So what the two fingers stand for are the body and the soul. So the, the, the soul looks out the, the left eye and the body looks out the right eye. So they called this, the body the creature. Oh, and it was evil. You know, it had all those terrible desires and uh, sexual, oh my God, sex. Oh. And we had to do our duty, of course, but oh, we didn't have to enjoy it. You know, it was, yeah. when you think about it, you think, what the hell were they into? But that's, that's, that's how they lived. At least that's how they pretended to live. Um, so we, let's right go there. back to let's go back <laughs> to the the painting. Uh, so she represents the soul, and not just an ordinary soul, but the the goddess soul, that very high level of consciousness. In other traditions, not in Christianity or any of the paternal religions where they have God the Father, but any religion where they talk about Mother Nature or Mother Earth, in those religions, it's not at all. A, taboo around sex it's uh, just a i don't know why that is but some of these cultures some sub groups of christianity or islam or judaism really wow where, where do they get these ideas <laughs> anyway can, can you put the painting back on please so yeah, he's going to talk about to... sex i want to see that picture yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is a babe <laughs> So uh, actually, there's another little hidden thing in here that I, I, I'll i point out to you. Um, and that is, look at her body type. So she's got narrow shoulders and sloped shoulders and wide hips and a sort of a big basin like uh, that form. Uh, it, it, there's another th thing. Someday we'll go through this teaching about the planets and what body types means. But that is... Uh, they named that after her. Ruben used to do paintings of women like this, but full figured and with those sloped shoulders. And in, in his other teaching, it was called the Venusian body type, Venusian for Venus. Yeah, so on the on the uh, left side, of the, <laughs> I'm getting my lefts and rights mixed up now. I'm all over. over. So that's where that sort of subdued, um, she's, she's moving from... Well, I'm, I'm over speaking now. I don't want to, I'm starting to read into it, but I don't want to do that. I think that's enough uh, symbolism. That's enough. Does, uh, does he get into life. things like the hair, the long hair? And, yeah. Uh, and notice it's red too. In, in mm -hmm. our time, Italians don't have red hair. They're usually dark. Yeah. But I guess 600 years ago, things were different. 700 years ago, I guess. And did he say why she's uh, standing in a shell? There is some reason, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Maybe she's emerging into the into this world. Yeah, that's what the, the you can interpret this as the same thing as, as the nativity of, in Christianity, where the love of God came into the world th through Jesus. And that's uh, an interpretation of this painting, that this is the love of the pagan gods coming in through Venus. Hmm. The m biggest lesson to learn is if you can put your face, get in a meditative state and try to put your face like hers. And it's amazing how <laughs> it's just uh, a, a, a wild thing. Hmm. So often- Yeah, they... it's as if she's reflecting on things. Like what, what would you call that expression? I guess it may vary depending on the person looking at it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's so if somebody who's a member of a school knows what a higher state of conscious is and what it feels like, whereas somebody who's not wouldn't. So of course they're going to have a different interpretation. And but, and so the they were this was the day of the Inquisition. This was a serious thing to be uh, uh, not painting something proper. So they had to have a proper story for the, for all these paintings. So that the, they wouldn't wind up getting burned alive. <laughs> what I see in this is I, I see I see beauty and I see innocence coming into the world, and I see um, some of the world wanting to cover up the beauty and 
you know, I, I, she's godly and heavenly, and the, and I don't, I'm not the ones on the on the right side of the picture. I don't know. They want to cover her up, and the one I don't know who the people on the left are. They're angels. Um, oh, they're angels. Okay, so anyway, that's what I see. I I see the people on the right trying to cover her up. Yeah, yeah. What I think is interesting is if you look at the the two levels of consciousness. It's as if she's found the perfect balance between the two. She isn't caught up in the material world, but she isn't totally focused on, you know, the angel world, if you want to call it that. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting. Hmm. Well, it is the birth of her. So she's coming from that angel world. She's stepping off of the clam, probably onto the shore and on into the material world. Well, she doesn't look like she really wants to come into the material world. <laughs> she just shows up. <laughs> it's actually probably better if you think in terms of consciousness. Yeah. These, these things represent different types of consciousness. Good point. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so would you call the one state of consciousness the five senses? It's definitely associated with the five senses, yes. The, the, the consciousness of um, the part of us that wants to survive, that has to eat and sleep and drink and all that. Yeah. And then there's the other sort of, often we refer to as a higher state of consciousness, which we might get into when we meditate. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Kenny. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Do you get to learn a little more about that? Uh... Yeah. I, you know, I've seen that. Uh, painting and it, it never really looked at it, right? So it's, it's good yeah, to have someone to tell you another side to it. Brent? Does does the painter who did that, um, it, has he written anything particularly about the painting that you, you're aware of? I'm not aware of anything. He's mm -hmm. painted many paintings and they're all of the same ilk. This mm -hmm. is, I think, his most famous. There's another one called the Primavera. Uh, it's a about muses and things and i must admit i'd never figured it out i <laughs> i could not figure that one out um but he has there's quite a few and they all they all did at these art schools they all did certain formula paintings so they did a an area ascension one um what was the other ones the, there's judgment day they often did they did the nativity one classic christian events they would all do their version of them. Hmm. Any other comments? Or? I don't know if anybody's ever seen the uh, Terry Gillian film, uh, The Adventures of Baron von Munchausen. And they do, uh, 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 you know, they film The Birth of Venus. And uh, she's uh, um, represented by the actress Uma Thurman. And I'd mm -hmm. say at the time they couldn't have picked a better model. Yeah. But the very funny thing about it is that she's married to um, Oliver Reed, who is Vulcan, the god of fire. And he's very jealous <laughs> of her. And, and, anyway, Baron von Munchausen starts to charm her and he gets into trouble because mm -hmm. of the jealous husband. Fun film. Yeah, those stories are great. Thank uh -huh. you. Well, then, you know what? Maybe we should have you do the roomy thing now so at least okay. we have that too sure and i can display it for people as well yeah let's do that and i'll just read it off the screen here okay so it's rumi's reed's tale yeah so he okay. rumi had a uh, wrote volumes of poetry and uh, when it's translated into english the, the original translator or sort of whoever that is i forget the name uh, just did it word for word as best he could. Okay. So I'll read the first one and then you can roll it up a slightly for the next one. Okay. The whining reed in, breeze, in breezes blown complains of distant love and time. The bed of reeds I once called home, now parted from am I. My sad lamenting makes men moan and makes the women cry. Nay, my heart be torn with pain, burnt up by separation's fire, that I may sing you once again the pain of lost love's sweet desire. Those parted from where they once were, 
wish back the days of him and her. This one points to the uh, the fall of Adam and Eve. Oh. Um, so it's see, there's it's about separation. So oh, the, yeah. the, it's like Adam and Eve were hurled out of the Garden of Eden. Well, the we the the reed was with his home, and he now separated from it. So he he's now whining in the breeze. Right. And what I did was I changed the emphasis in the second verse. There's quite a few more verses than this. So it's this this is a, quite a long poem. But I did this short version because um, there was someone who had lost her husband, her, he died. And she was, you know, that's a very, when you have these long, long marriages and one of, and, the, and the husband dies, it's so, so difficult for the woman. Uh, so I just changed the emphasis slightly on that last sentence. This Rumi was a, a genius. So he recognizes that we human beings have this longing and he's now trying to tell us what it is and then then he's in the second verse he actually wants us to increase our it's a wish to increase the amount of pain you have so that you can really get into it and and really yearn to go back to the to god really that's i guess that's what they're saying or to heaven or however you interpret that story of adam and eve I think one of the interpretations we've played with is the, the difference between unity and duality. Mm -hmm. and, and now I'm not so sure Rumi would talk about a, a strong urge for us to be in unity. I think we're not, we're so, so far gone from that, that we, we, we don't even recognize what it is. But anyway, that, so I wrote this last part in honor of this woman and and asked her to, in fact, the person who's visiting me tonight is uh, the one who, whose friend was, was the new widow. Oh. So there's... Also, I, I'm sorry, Kenny, but when I read that last part too, may my heart be torn with pain, it reminds me a bit of like the dark night of the soul feeling, right? Mm -hmm. That it's so torturous that you wonder if you're gonna make it out alive. <laughs> <laughs> really, you know, yeah. but you beg for help, right? <laughs> so. Funny you should mention that poem, because that mm -hmm. one is, uh, I trans I retranslated that one too, because when St. John of the Cross wrote it, this guy was just ultra, I mean, he's a saint for one thing, so yeah. that means he's very advanced in his religion, um, but he also was a mystic, mm -hmm. and uh, so... Uh, the, the translator, you know, she's a devout Catholic and all, and try, and they all, translators all want to do the same thing, and that is be true to the translation. But I'm more, more want to be true to what the underlying meaning is. Mm -hmm. So that means we can change the words if they better point to the meaning. Ah, yeah. yeah. So, for example, the sheep stories, you know, sheep shepherd stories. Mm -hmm. not that relevant these days be better if it was a car mechanic and you had a flat tire or something like that then people mm -hmm. could identify with the situation yeah. so i i have translated saint john of the cross sometime well maybe i'll just send you a copy and you yeah can, send it, it to it's me quite a bit longer than this <laughs> and it's it's uh anyway i don't want to go on about that one so should i is there anything else you'd like to say about this one so no. did you rewrite the the last part completely or just changed a few words? I've rewritten the, both parts entirely oh. because they don't rhyme and there's no beat to them oh, in okay. their translation. When Rumi wrote them, of course, there was. Yeah. But when the trans, it, you know, it's, that's the way translators are. It just happens that way. Yeah. So what I have to do is read what he, Rumi wrote or the translation and read into it what he meant. And that's the thing I like to do most in writing. That's when I did St. John of the Cross, I just think, oh boy, did I ever get that one? It just yeah. felt so good finishing that. Yeah. This wow. feels good too, you know, that little quirky ending, wishing back the days of him and her was not in there. It yeah. was wishing back the days of unity where he's back with his home. Yeah. And so I just changed it because this was more designed for 
a person in mourning. Yeah. And yeah. it's about mourning. It's a separation yeah. and everything. I mean, it's it's not too far off base. Yeah. But I just pointed it directly at the experience of of losing your spouse. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Ken. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Uh, Brent, did you want to share something with us? Yeah. Um, can you give me the ability to do that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to show um, various aspects of what's what's now, the now, okay. um, some aspects of oneness, some aspects of perception, ego, self-reflection, and this toroidal energy form that I've talked about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so, the one where it loops the energy. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Kelly, I'm going to do my best to describe these. Anybody else jump in if, if they, they can think of something else I should say yeah. that I don't because she yeah. doesn't see these. Okay, so let's start with the now. Okay, how about now? Oh, there we go. Now yeah. you're cooking. Okay, so I've got to stop, share, and then go back every time. Okay, so let me just make this a little bit. Now, can you see the whole picture right there? Yeah. You should see eight images. Eight. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, in the middle here, this is the brightest part. So, so there's a beach scene. There's a lady who's running along the beach. And the images on the right side fade in. And there she is. And then they fade out. So I see the now is being right here in the middle where she's jumping up in the air. Yeah. So that's the now, and then the images uh, coming in or the future images come in to hit the now, and then they fade off to the left, and that's the uh, that's the past. So, so yeah, and just so Kelly, just so you know, it's a, a young woman running on the beach, and when she's in the now moment, the she is like her legs are wide apart her arms wide apart because she's leaping right it's a big leap mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. okay okay thank you guys <laughs> no problem all right now let's go back here so would you consider this like you think it's a, a like a modern day way of interpreting that photograph in relation to sacred art kind of thing all right. So did you want to say what you just said again, Diane? Because I missed it. Yeah. So are, when you look at these pictures, are you looking at them as representing uh, like some sort of spiritual thing in some way? Like it's Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Maybe. Because the, the now is really important to understand and, and to be in the now and not be drifting around in the past and the future and, and realize that in this moment right here and now, this is all that's real basically. So that I, I consider this a spiritual aspect of, high, of higher consciousness. So in this particular one, um, there's this lady who's walking down the street and she's, um, uh, she's in probably Las Vegas. There's some uh, gambling joints in the background and she's walking down the street and you can see her and then you can see a thin part of this entire frame that is right there in the particular present moment right now and everything is clear. On the other side of the now, on the left side and the right side, the actual pixels that are the screen image uh, are the same and they're drawn out to the right and drawn out to the left. So they don't, they don't show the picture as it is when it's the, in the past and in the future, but the real picture is like right here, right now. And that's the one in the direct middle right here. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Do you understand that, Kelly? And what's interesting, yeah, she looks like she's in Las Vegas, but she's a very conservative looking older woman. And there is no past, there is no future kind of thing, right? It's, it's just stripes on either side, kind of like streaks or energy lines. But the, the, the real focus is in the middle where you see the image. Right, right. So. Understand. Okay. All right, now we'll move on to oneness. So this is, um, these are bodies, human bodies, male and female bodies, and they're on a double helix that you can't really see. We can just see the top part of it. And it's, mm -hmm. they're, they're jubilant and, and awake, and, awake and they're, they're, they're experiencing their own existence, their own, their own sense of self right now. And so they're, it's an artistic representation of different bodies and 
they're all they're all nude and they're all uh, exasperated in in uh, being alive is the way I look at this. So uh, Kelly, do you know what the double helix is? The DNA double helix. And so th there's that section in the middle, and then the naked figures are um, all around it, basically. And in that, okay. so okay. It's and like, I, I'm, and you were saying it represents oneness. Is that how you look at it? The way I, I look at this, yeah, it, uh, it, it does. It's a feeling of oneness that we're all in the same boat, that we're all experiencing the same thing, regardless of the fact that we're, that we're separate. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So here we see like hundreds of people, all from the top, looking down at them, and they're all, they've all got their arms stretched out toward the center, of this big place that they all are in so oh. everyone's tight in into a into a into the crowd everyone's reaching for the center and i don't know what's in the center for them but what's in the center for me is everyone is reaching into the place where there is this oneness in which in which everything comes out of and they 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 think they're separate and so they're reaching for it to get into that place and they don't quite realize that they're already there in that place. But uh, this is a sort of a representation of how we, we strive to get someplace where we already are. Yeah, it does remind me a bit of an experience I had at a Tibetan temple, like a, it's a Buddhist temple here in Vancouver. And what people would do if they could not uh, get to say a certain uh, image, like the Buddhist, uh, Buddhist image, or uh, I forget what it was, but they would, the front person would reach out and everyone close to the object would reach out and then people behind them would touch them. Mm. So it was like they were forming an energy line. Mm. I, do that. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. Okay, so here's a galaxy in space. And here is a figure emerging from that galaxy that looks like Zeus, yeah. um, some god. But yeah. it's it's whatever it is, it's it's the coming together of all the separate selves thinking they're separate and this one this oneness of of the the embodiment of that of that oneness is is put here by the artist in the shape of of, of one one body being very exhilarated uh, by the fact that they know they exist. Very powerful image, isn't yes, it? Yes, very, very yeah. much so. so. this figure is coming out of the galaxy, Kelly. And, uh, okay. And, yeah, and so, um, it, he looks like a god with the, the, like a Greek god, right? With the beard and the hair and very muscular, very okay. powerful. Wow. Coming out of it. Okay. So um, this is kind of hard to describe, but there are all these little streaks of light. And then the streaks of light are kind of coming out of one center point. And then there's a whole bunch of those streaks of light coming out of a center point that are all connected to each other in this one picture. And it shows how there is an individuality to it, but there's also a oneness in it together. Okay. They're all, they're yeah, you all can connected see. Yeah. light. Filaments. Yeah, say wow. that again, uh, Dave. Mm -hmm. Would you describe it again? It's just like uh, Brent was saying, but um, they're emerging from a center of light, but elongated filaments of light that are interconnected with all these other little sources of light. Yeah, like they're all entangled yeah. together uh, in yeah. something. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's very effective. Mm -hmm. it's Okay, so imagine a, a dark uh, blue sky, you're looking up to the sky, and there are two hands, one on the right side, one on the left side. They both look dark because there's no light on them, and they're pointing their fingers toward each other, and right before they touch is where the sun is shining through, as if when they touch, that sun energy is going to be running through both. So there's the oneness in, in the touch that comes uh, when we when we connect. Reminds me of, is it Michelangelo? Yeah. The, the figure, yeah, touching God, yeah. touching yeah. man. Yeah. So here you have man touching man, or connecting. And I guess the sun or the light can represent 
consciousness or God or whatever way you want to interpret it too. Right. Okay. So this is a little animation that I did a few years ago. I was experimenting. So this is Monument Valley in the background, uh, blue sky, open desert-like place. And there's three um, spheres in front of us. And each one of these spheres has in it the entire background as an image and an I, E-Y-E, -E, right in the middle of it. And so when I play this animation, what's going to happen is they're going to like merge into oneness. Hmm. Oh, very cool. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had some music to go along with this. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. All three, all three bubbles have merged into one. And they become one eye. One, one eye. Okay. This one is uh, the aspen tree. The aspen tree is one organism that has a root system from which all the other trees oh, okay. that look separate come out of. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you walk into an aspen forest and it looks like all separate trees. That's the superficial wow. level. You go to underneath to a, a more substantial level and you see that's the truth, which is like one root system. And that's us. Yeah. Very cool. Didn't know that. That's very cool. <laughs> okay. So we've got, a, a, we've got a figure of a, a person on the left side and a person on the right side. One may be a male, one may be a female. It isn't clear. And then uh, the artist has taken where their eye would be, the right eye on one person, the left eye on another, as they're looking at each other and creates a new face. So there's this one face representing both people. Yeah. And so there we have another feeling, kind of a feeling of, of Yeah, yeah. So really what they did is he took two profiles, Kelly, a, a male and a female profile, and uh, created the face between those two. So. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now we get into perception and ego. So this is a picture of an eye looking to the side and it is coming out of the universe, galaxies and everything. And it's looking towards uh, the, uh, the other side, which is a part of the U. So if you can imagine the I and the universe on one part of the letter U, and then on the other side uh, is the space. And the, the eye is looking towards that space and, and trying to see what it can see about what it is and where it's come from. Uh, yeah, so really, even though it's from the universe, it's looking outside itself rather than inside. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's the, the universe here represented by the U, I think encompasses all the four dimensional space time world. Um, and I don't know what the artist had in mind, but what I see is it's, it's, it, it comes from what something and it's looking back into that something to try and get to the nature of itself. Okay. That's what I'm seeing in it. Any comments? Does anyone want to comment on it? Hmm. Kenny, Dave? I'd have to look at it for a while, let it sink in. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it reminds me of looking at my own hand. So if I hold my hand up and look at it, I'm sort of like that picture, except a little bit smaller universe. <laughs> I often uh, think about my own hand. And what is it really? Yeah. But he's not he's looking out there. He's only seeing a small part of what he's uh, of the whole part of. Mm. Like he's it's he's connected to that, but at where he's looking, obviously with that those dots, he's. Uh, He's only seeing so much. I guess he's got to look more. Look mm -hmm. deeper. Mm. Uh, this one I recognize. <laughs> yes, this is Plato's Cave. This is the best oh, rendition. Oh, that's right. Plato's Cave, yeah. Best rendition I could find. So yeah. a, bunch of, a bunch of people are tied up and they're looking at a wall and they see shadows on that wall and they see it as reality. But actually those shadows are being put there by a fire and some people walking with some stencils that represent a horse and a dog and a, and a <clears> warrior. <throat> And so uh, they're not, they're seeing the shadows, but they're not seeing reality. And once you walk outside the cave, then you can see out into the sun and the trees and, 
get a better picture on on what reality really is. And th and that's what people refer to this all the time now, right? Because they feel that uh, you know we're being manipulated and we're not looking at reality. So yeah, it works on, it, on any show. level. It's, yeah, you're 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 you can, you can be fooled by looking at yourself through something like this. I remember in, in Toronto there was a some philosophical school uh, who talked about this analogy and the um, the movie The Matrix. They said it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And you know that Plato must have been a pretty smart guy because there's <laughs> another another analogy too in Buddhism. So the 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 hero of that's us. We're all going to become enlightened. So when they go outside and out, out of the cave and into the sunshine, then that's liberation. And when they go back in to save the others, that's Buddhism. That's being a Buddha. That you oh. care so much about the others, you try to save them. Yeah. Then you encounter the problem that they don't want to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because they're caught up with the illusion. Yeah, they're really into it. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. With that part, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many, like, there's so many times I, I tell people something, and they're like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, okay, that's cool. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just try to, you know, uh, help you, you know, help you from uh, going off a cliff. But that that's okay. If you want to, well, you know, then... Who am I to stop you? <laughs> okay, so can you see the uh, spectrums? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think you talked about this in the previous video about what the dog can see. Right. Explain that again. Okay, so <laughs> the human's view of the world is a spectrum, and the spectrum's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, and that's what humans can see. Now, yeah. a dog, unfortunately, can only see yellow and blue along with white and gray levels and black. So they can't see uh, red, they can't see orange, they can't see green, and they can't see purple. So what no. they're, what they look like, so that's, this is the, so what they see, and we're gonna, now we're looking at a beach scene. Okay. So now on the left side, you see a beach scene with people in the sand and, uh, uh, you know, uh, canopies and things like that and, and the colors that we see are all there but on the right side you see what a dog sees and it's just yellow and blue and so we miss out on another aspect of reality now the dog makes up for it because they're a lot better with smells and uh, hearing than we are they have so you know we're left in the dust there but this this gives an idea that uh that there is a difference in in, in different species so we go to we're going to go to the picture of a mantis shrimp. Okay, now here's a mantis shrimp, and it's got these giant eyes. And there's three sections here of each eye. And behind this eye on their retinas are 16 different receptors. We don't even have half that, half, it's like we have half that many. Um, and so compare us to the dog, and now compare us to the mantis shrimp. The mantis shrimp has so many more receptors, and they have a visual experience that is far and away better than ours, and we can't even imagine what that is. People guess that it has something to do with, you know, uh, ultra, you know, special light. I mean, it's all words. But we're all we're all grasping, but like the dog can't understand what we can see. We can't understand what the mantis shrimp sees. So we have three different perceptions of reality. Which one is the right one? Yeah. Well, they're all right and they're all wrong because reality is what it is and we only grasp pieces of it and it's only relative to like like what the organism is that sees and we're stuck with it as long as we live so no, nobody sees reality in its completeness it's always and we're all looking through a perceptual bubble well there are people who have had like near-death experiences and they have said that when they left this reality they saw colors and things that they couldn't couldn't describe because they they did not match this reality like they said they saw a bigger spectrum of things than yeah. they would if they were here their perception In fact, they said everything seemed clearer it seemed brighter yeah uh, yeah 
Yeah, their perception changed dramatically when they got out of the limited human form. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, there's a funny one coming up. So there's a wall, and, <laughs> and on this wall is a is a chalk drawing of a dog, a very good chalk drawing of a dog. And then there's a real dog that's up near the at the wall, and it's smelling the tail end of that chalk dog like it's a real dog. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, the, so the dog. It's, the dog's perception is such that it can't really tell when it has a really strong uh, feeling of desire inside of it. It can't tell what actually it's, it's even looking at. It just is reminded of that, that thing that runs inside the dog to procreate. And so there, there it is. And uh, there are some views of perception where we catch ourselves in things like that. We wake up out of some dream we were in and we realize, oh my God, it wasn't even real in the slightest. Yeah. Well, would you say, though, that perhaps that would be a good one to show Dave when he comes back. He'd find it funny because he's a dog person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just makes me think more about, like, there, even what we perceive in this reality, there's probably some, I mean, there's still some truth to it. It's just that it may be a distorted truth of what we see. So this one... <laughs> Um, is a picture of a guy who took, uh, it's a drawing, a guy sort of grabbed his face and pulled it off his head, and now it's looking back towards where it came from. So yeah. so the perceptual part of, the, of, of him is now looking inwardly to see what it can find. And so that's the dilemma that we're in with perception. We're limited by our perception, and we try to get as deeply as we can into the nature of reality, but we're we're always going to be, uh, it's always going to be difficult to see and literally like tearing part of us, like our eyes off and aiming them in. We don't have to do that. Um, but this is, a, this is, this is an example of someone who's feeling very strongly about trying to figure out what's going on inside. Where, who am I? Where did I come from? You know, what, what's going on? Did you get that Kelly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to show Dave the last image? Sure. Oh, the dog with the chalk drawing. Oh yeah, you saw that. Oh yeah, yeah I that. saw that, and, okay. uh, but I didn't catch the point. Uh, so how well, would... the point is that the dog is fooled by the chalk drawing and thinks mm -hmm. it's real because it has a very strong, innate um, uh, feeling of, of procreation. It doesn't understand it; it just drives it. And so, yeah. anything to, that its brain sees that's even remotely responsible, re, re, responsive to that mating urge uh -huh. the, it, the dog goes right for it e mm -hmm. even though it doesn't it, it 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 probably doesn't even know what it's doing at that point you know it's just mm -hmm. that urge inside that's making it happen yeah I, I i've seen that actually happen there's a a video a store that still exists around the corner from here and uh it's called black dog video and they used to have a, <laughs> a sandwich board that was cut out to look like a a, a dog and uh, my dog, being who she was, uh, first time she saw that, she challenged it. She went up to it, barking at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we see a guy uh, with, his, with his son, maybe uh, two years old or something. He's throwing his son up in the air, and he's only a couple of feet away from him. And, it, and the, the <laughs> caption on that picture is, as the father sees... And then the next caption is, as the child sees, and, the, and the, the kid is like, you know, like four feet or so away from its dad. It's a little bit higher. And then it's, the next one is, as the mother sees, and now that, that kid is way up in the air, uh, and the, the dad better catch it. So it's, it's like your perception is everything, you know? Yeah. The dad sees it one way, the mother sees it, and then the child sees it completely differently. So mother's it's, instinct that's yeah, a great all picture feeling based level interesting yeah yeah it, it just yeah it brings in the what the how the emotions affect our perception yeah, yeah. so here's i think oh, this yeah is, this is i've a, used this actually on expanding consciousness I oh you did you did yeah <laughs> uh I, this was the best one i could find and uh yeah. 
So this is a woodcut that shows the inner world, the, the four-dimensional space-time world we're caught up in. And somebody has figured out a way to stick their head out of the bubble, and now they're seeing something beyond that. And it's uh, clouds and suns and different levels of reality that's out there. So they're, they, they found a way out of that bubble that we all live in. They also show wheels, though. Like I think of like that, mm -hmm. that wheel in Buddhism, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so. Or, or even like a mechanical thing outside of the bubble. Interesting. Yeah, that uh, Donovan Leach, uh, remember, everybody remembers Donovan? Yeah. Pretty good man. He used that as one of his album covers, and it was called Cosmic Wheels. Ah, great, great. Oh, Donovan. My goodness. I, yeah. yeah, he's cool. Oh, okay. Hello, yellow. He <laughs> caught a picture of me. So <laughs> this one, this one is a, a pawn from the game of chess. And it's um, looking at its shadow. There's a light behind it shining a shadow of itself on the wall. And it sees uh, the king from the, from the chess game. And so it's uh, it's seeing itself as the king. Now you could you can interpret this either as um, uh, delusions of grandeur, or you could see it as a possibility that the pawn could achieve either way. Or it could be someone who's narcissistic, or it could be, you know, the ego. I don't know. Yeah, del delusions yeah, of grandeur. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, and it's I like the possibility scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It could be any of it. You could, you know, but uh, that's you could if you looked at yourself as a king, you would perhaps move towards being. And what yeah. is it your friend always says? If you're the queen, if you think you're the queen of Scotland, and you want to say it, Dave? Oh yeah, no, she she ran a dementia ward in uh, on Vancouver Island, mm. and she said yes. If t speaking of you know interacting with her her clients, and she would say, well, if you're dealing with somebody, and uh, and she tells you she's the queen of Spain, and then you respond, you are the queen of Spain. If you think you're the queen of Spain, you are the queen of Spain. <laughs> okay, this one um, is somebody who's looking at the palm of their hand, and in the palm of their hand is them, a, a little body, a little person in the palm of their hand. So they're viewing that. So this is this is what we we are doing. We're we're trying to find out when we want to find trying to find out who we are, what we are. And so here's a guy looking at his own self image in front of him to find it. And unfortunately, we're stuck with whatever shows up. We're stuck with the image of ourselves. And there's no way that we can not see what we can't see about ourselves. So whatever we see of ourselves is just a partial aspect of the totality of whatever we are so he thinks of himself as being small though to some degree right well he it well he's got his hand held out so he, he yeah. can't imagine himself yeah. being too heavy <laughs> yeah yeah no i i get that but also he could have visualized himself in front of him right without this right so yeah he could have made I mean, it in a different way yeah 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 he probably was hung up in Photoshop and wanted to do it. You know, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Okay, now I can stop here. I have more, um, but yeah. Least... So let's uh, let's look at a few other things. We can come back to, but interesting uh, views on things. Thank you for that. Did you have yeah. a, a conclusion, Brent, or just gonna? A conclusion. Are you wrapped up, or do we are we going to? No, no, it's going to show some. There's other... more to go. It, oh, I, okay. there, I'm not sure there's time today, but there's there's more to go about different yeah. things like what I've talked about before. Yeah, yeah no, they they're really good uh, images. So thank you. Yeah, they help dramatically to get the point across, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I thought with the next one. Albert Bierstadt. I don't know. Okay. So, um, I, you know, the subject being sacred art, and I wanted to, I had to ask myself, well, what, what, a, what's one of the most sacred moments you've ever had in your life? And it was uh, up and down <laughs> in Northern California, among the redwood trees. So, um, 
this art depicts that mm. and um i think it certainly captures you know the 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 essence of what it feels like to be in this forest and just for me it, it um this is my church this is you know this is where i connect to the sacred in in nature and and when you're in places like this and and uh you know uh you just i feel just connected to uh a divine source or you know this to me is like where i can i don't have to think i don't have to meditate this is you know the the thinking and the meditating it just it's all right there so i just uh can go to somewhere like this or i can think about being here and and it and it uh it connects me with sacredness with the divine and uh uh you know i i can just say get out in nature <laughs> yeah, yeah you know this so, is a painting from 1874 just can you blow that up it's beautiful and there's there's a number of of uh ones i've seen from time to time that i'll find like this there'll be these beautiful scenes with look at the depth in this thing and look at the compared to the size of the of the people yeah. you know it really it really um uh, gives me a feeling of, of the 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 huge the hugeness and the spaciousness and, and the wonderment of all this and also the artist i mean he's really showing god's work right uh and he he's depicted very well it's beautiful yeah, it, yeah. it's the it's light hard. giving it yeah yeah. yeah, if it, it almost takes a, it, an artist to get this, uh, what it's really like to be there, because uh, you can use a camera, but it, it doesn't sort of do it justice very often. Right. But this really, and, and you know how these captured a certain light, and uh, uh, yeah, this is just, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful thing to experience. If you've ever had, get the chance, or if you've been here, you'll 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 know and if you haven't been here i strongly suggest you get there can you tell me how to get to that exact location i don't know exactly where this is but uh i've uh, just outside of crescent city right near the oregon california border there's some great uh re, you know uh i think there may be national parks or state parks if you you could stay in crescent city you could like, I think you're 10 minutes away from this, you know, literally you can just drive into uh, places like this and, and pick up a trail and then just walk. Uh, I didn't see any lake and waterfall quite like this, but certainly walked among the, you know, these giant trees and, and got this feeling. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does great work. Let's see what other ones you have here. This one you weren't too keen on. It's a photograph, but I really? like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's actually really good. Yeah, yeah. I just and then this one you liked, yeah, which is a photograph. Yeah. This even even playing. this, even the real thing though. It, it, yeah. I mean, there's something that it's missing compared to the the, the artistic rendering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the artist he captures it, and you like you have to get right up close to this to really kind of understand just how how immense these trees are yeah it's yeah. quite wonderful and it's all constantly changing it looks like it's not but it's all constantly changing and everything growing and yeah it's amazing yeah and i i think this these groves are sort of where you know certain religions uh, get their inspiration from or i think cathedrals are inspired by these the you know giant forest like this and you mm. certainly get that feeling of up, upliftment you know you're all and it's something much bigger than yourself and you're you know you're in awe so yeah. certainly draws you up into a, a spiritual way of thinking for me anyway yeah you you ain't the only one yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any certainly... do you have any comments I do. The one of the messages you can get from this is to look into the forest. It's it, it plays to Brent's co uh, concept of perception. What do you see? And it depends on the eye of the viewer. So if you're standing here where this photographer is, 
and you started to walk directly ahead, you see how if just looking directly ahead, you see how you can only see so far. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see what's past that, you actually have to walk through the woods to it. Mm -hmm. So this is how, what, how the mystics think. They, they think that their concept of God is if you, you can see God from a distance, but if you want to get up really close, you've got to walk, you've got to go there. So it's like walking through this forest. That is, the, what you're seeing now disappears, and what's just ahead there, just around that next corner, just around that next tree way out there, that's what you encounter. And will it be the same or will it be different? Well, how do you know? You better go check. <laughs> so that's what the mystics do when they meditate and uh, have in, all this incense and stuff. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. But that first one really showed it well. Did you want, want me to go back to that one? Now that's a beautiful piece. Yeah, well, see, it had a brook in it. And that brook is often uh, yeah. water. The water yeah. symbolizes wisdom and emotions flowing. Mm -hmm. And so if you wanted to go and find the beginning of that brook, you, you can't see it without walking. Up. you got to walk up there because you can't just see these people sitting on the big rock yeah. there looking. They can only see so far. Yeah. And if they're with mystics, then they want to go and see the source. you got to get their feet wet. Yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, talk about John Muir Wood ever, Brent? I'm not sure if you're. If I'm... Have I talked about it or been there? Or well, uh, um, I don't. I just seem to think you may have mentioned it, or but maybe I'm getting. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, okay. But uh, that's another place that uh, that that's truly amazing. Uh, John Muir Wood. Have you been there? I, I no, I don't think so. But I, I've gone to a lot of places like the Grand Canyon, okay. Petrified Forest, Zion National Park. Oh yeah, um, those kind of places. I've always John, been drawn, drawn, drawn oh, to. Oh yeah, those. yeah. Well, John Muir Woods just uh, up the up the street from you, so it's yeah. on uh, Mount yeah. Tam. Oh, I've been to Mount Tam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, and and it's uh, yeah, really uh, a really beautiful place, and they. They, you know, ask you to just walk quietly through the trail and, and meditate. And it's, uh, I guess if you get there at the right time of day, it, it, it could, you know, you could get that experience. But when we went, it was a bit, a bit uh, it was, when did we go? It was still September, but there was a lot of tourists. And, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was uh, 2017. Yeah. 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 And then we went to Terrapin Crossroads. Yeah. In San Rafael, it's uh, the bass player for the Grateful Dead. Um, I was just thinking that. <laughs> he's, he's got a compound there, and 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 he, you know, there's just such a great place. He's, he he plays just about I don't know three or four times a week, and he has guests come in, and they have a nice outdoor stage. Fits about three hundred people, and. Uh, yeah, Phil Lesh, and uh, yeah. that's uh, again, yeah, another another special spot for me. Yeah, he's he's a deadhead. Oh yeah, I, I, I had to kind of adjust a bit there. <laughs> that's not my thing. The hand doesn't get it. No, I just don't get that. Yeah, you had to be there. I. <laughs> The first time I went, I went nuts. I just got up. I got up the first song, and I didn't sit down for the rest of the concert. And everybody was going crazy, and I got it. I got it. This is, this is yeah. hot music, man. This is really hot music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Kelly. Hey. Oh, you're back! Yay! I'm back. Okay, just a little video I put together. I I uh, described this to Kelly before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, Grace! Can you hear it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Is it loud enough though? Yeah. Okay. Is that Kelly's boyfriend? No, oh, these are just people on the beach. I was oh. with Kelly. Oh. Yeah. And and you call this wine? Yes.
So that's you kept that you playing that, right, Kelly? Yes. Yes. And is that your music? Yes. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Good job. Wow. <laughs> Can't believe yeah. it. You should put that Thank on YouTube. You. <laughs> yeah, good, good work, Kelly. Yeah, Thank that you. was fabulous. Yeah, you're you're very talented. That without, I mean, really, I, I I'm shocked. <laughs> it's, it's great. That was beautiful. The, the effect that it had on me was to induce inner peace. Mm -hmm. You know, you just yeah. Kind of go, oh. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> work. <Beautiful. laughs> Yeah. So, um, I guess the next one is me. <laughs> uh, and um, I thought I'd show, uh, I mentioned this in the previous uh, meeting, that, uh, in fact, the one we did on music, and I said, oh, I put this video together to show this group I belong with, show them what I was doing, because I wasn't attending their meetings for a while, because I was studying it was Ascended Master stuff, St. Germain, that sort of stuff, because I had been doing this sacred art course by Jasmine Heen, and all of this stuff was coming to me. So I thought, well, the best way to share this with the group was to do this video. So I'm using the, the music from Giuliano Rabanello that I played last time, the Brazilian singer. And uh, then it just shows you me doing some sacred, sacred art and the things that I'm doing. And, and I, I really was hoping Shima would join tonight because I thought it'd be a great idea for her to, you know, do something like this to kind of show us, you know, what her practice is. And, you know, uh, again, these are things that perhaps Brent and Kenny, you might be interested in as well. So I'm going to show that, and then I'll show you a few of the pieces completed after I, I did that. It's called, If You Keep Doing What You're Doing, You'll Keep Getting What You're Getting.
So just so you know, I did describe that video to Kelly before we did this. <laughs> Any comments? And then I can show you a few uh, pieces if you like. I think I mentioned Jasmine had certain images. And then as I was painting, uh, it would change completely from what she had. I, in fact, I can give you an example of that. There is. Um, that was all your artwork? Yeah, all this is my artwork, but she has, I'm going to show you before, I just showed you the angel. I call her the flapper angel because she looks like a flapper with a bit of an Asian uh, look to her. Oh. But this is this is what Jasmine Heen's sketch was because she had this sacred art, sacred portals. And the whole idea is you cleared your, your space of all old pictures and, you know, what your aunt gave you as a gift and blah, blah, right? Because you want to change the energy in your space. So then you produce art pieces to put up in the space. Mm. And so she, you know, uh, had some. So this was her angel sketch. And, um, right, I started with one like this. Uh, this is her uh, Christ one, which is kind of uh, mixing like East and West. <laughs> Uh, I haven't done this one. I, I want to do a different one of Jesus. Uh, this is her Mother Earth one, her Cosmic Mother, I think. I'll show you that later. I, I didn't do that one. I didn't do these ones. I did the biblical ones first, and then I hope to do some of them. But I want to show you, this was her, I think it was supposed to be like Mary Magdalene, but she also said a bit of Kuan Yin. So I'll show you my Mary Magdalene uh, and then her Mary, which I did for Dave as a Christmas gift. And, uh, you know, mother and child. What were the other ones? Uh, oh, and this one, she shows a very old uh, St. Francis of Assisi. And I wanted to show him more, uh, not really youthful, but uh, uh, maybe in this, you know, like 40s, right? I wanted, I, I wanted to show that he's he's not worn out because he represents the environment, right? And uh, and animals, right? Kindness to animals. So I wanted to show that, you know, he still had some energy in them. Okay, so. Okay, let's see. Pardon me. Let's see him. Yeah, I guess show him now. So this is my angel that came up. And I want to show, because I was doing a lot of the readings about Atlantis and uh, Plato wrote about Atlantis, right? And it's thought that it was located in the middle of the Atlantic. So I'm showing that uh, that is to represent Atlantis rising again. Uh, and uh, for some reason, she just seemed to come up, <laughs> as I called her, uh, uh, the angel flapper. She just looked like a flapper. And her dress and everything is, is interesting. So this is actually hung up in our bedroom. You saw the cosmic one. I guess show you my Mary Magdalene. And I want to show uh, Mary Magdalene as a woman of wealth. Because some believe that actually she wasn't a prostitute. She was actually a woman of wealth. She was possessed by seven demons and, and uh, Jesus um chased out those demons but you know I, I just wanted to show that so i i used a lot of gold there uh and i show her more modest uh clothing from a later period but yeah so that's my version from you know the really wild one that uh jasmine Heen had in his first sketch jasmine Heen, is that the same lady who, who lives on light that's right yeah she does a lot of uh uh, she started the Embassy of Peace, and, and she travels a lot and and uh, really believes that if you lighten your diet, um, it really helps you to pull in higher frequencies. Uh, this is my mother, Mary. And because I was doing the Ascended Master stuff, and they were talking about the different virtues, right? These colors represent the virtues, like uh, blue is you know, the will of God. And then you have the wisdom of God with the yellow. The pink is divine love. Uh, you have purity. 
uh, green is, you know, um, creation, uh, craving, right? Uh, gold is um, peace. And then you have uh, violet or mauve that is um, uh, invocation or transformation. And here's my St. Francis of Assisi. That uh, the one that you saw was the one that Dave said, no, actually it was this one you see in the video, but I had an earlier version. Dave said, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> it did not look right. So I had to redo it, but he, uh, yeah, yeah. So, but you can see where I've made them look younger from the ones she had. Mm -hmm. And again, I have the, the different rays or virtues around it. And then this, this is my cosmic piece, which you saw in the video. And this was just something that I, because when I meditate, sometimes I see like cosmic things. And so I just thought, yeah, I should start, you know, uh, I should paint at least one cosmic picture. And so we have this hung in our bedroom as well. And this was, I call it the vortex, but really it was just the first one because she, she's, uh, what she's saying is not everybody is an artist. Uh, well, she's saying they are, if, you know, they, you know, have the music and they have some guidance, they can produce these things. So the first piece was just learning to mix colors and just using your hands, not using brushes at all. Right, and so that's what I was doing. And she said, don't overwhelm yourself with color, just pick maybe three, you know, or, or whatever, right? And so I was just experimenting, that's probably seven or eight layers of paint there, just working on it. And uh, yeah, when I uh, got into the course with her, really it did, and Dave, would you say it really changed the energy of the space when, you know, we started putting up these images, it really, but, yeah, I definitely. Yeah. Was, uh, and even people would comment when they come into our, our apartment, like, wow, like, you know, it just feels so, like, it's such a good vibe, right? <laughs> so, and this one I just did, uh, it's just a family picture, but uh, my uh, Kelly sister just had a baby in September and they named him Charlie. So I looked up, well, what does the name Charlie mean? And it, uh, Charles, the name Charles means free man. And so I wanted it to mm -hmm. represent that, right? That it, he's a free man. And so that's why I put young man on the beach, young boy. And I wrote all that information on the back of the painting. So he has that as a gift. And that's, that's it, I think. If, you know what I find inspirational about your stuff? The, you explore a lot. You, like this, uh, this is a Jesus thing. Yeah, he, he had that uh, lesson he taught. It's the only verse I can remember in uh, Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be answered. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened. So that's what I see you doing in, in just a little tour you've taken, taken me on. Um, and it's very cool. Um, I've chosen a different way of doing it. Well, maybe not that different, um, but I, I, I like to go deep in one at one at a time, then come back out and see what's, what, what else is around. Um, but, but it's so interesting watching you just exploring the whole universe here of, of experience of spirituality. Yeah, I, well, I will tell you with that video, I think it's helpful because people will just pick a few things from it that really resonate with them, right? Mm -hmm. Others will say, no, nope, not my thing. I had that on uh, a friend's channel and he got 2000 hits in like mm -hmm. just a couple of days, Wow! right? Because it's short and people are looking for something with all the stuff that was going on because that, that was done in April 21, right? And so there was a lot of uncertainty. There still is today, but you know, and people were like, what, what? So they saw that and at least it's giving them some ideas. If they're into meditation, that's reinforcing meditating or if they're, you know, if they're into breath work or yoga, you know, they're saying, yeah, yeah, you know, like that. That makes sense. Or maybe they used to do it and now they're going back to it, right? Mm -hmm. So 
So it, uh, like I said, it really, you know, had an impact on people. <laughs> so, yeah, and his music, people like, you know, I had people email me and say, love that. Love Giuliano Ravanello's music, so. Yeah, thanks, Diane. I yeah. always like that. Uh, so, any other comments? Anything? Uh, did you want to show a few more things, uh, Brent? Well, it's probably getting a little late for most of you um, guys. We'll do it another time. Yeah. 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 Guys. Hey, uh, yeah. Okay, Cal. Going to bed. <laughs> uh, but it's been fun. And uh, yeah, this has been great. Yeah. And Kelly, thank you for being patient with us because I, I did say to you it's going to be quite visual tonight, right? But, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, and yeah, and that's another thing I said to Kelly is with the video because there is, you know, uh, you know, I've written on it. I could actually do a voiceover, so add, you know, voice. Yeah. Very good night. All right, guys. Yeah. Have a good night. Right. Thank you. Thank night. you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone.